and thank you for joining me in Annie's Stories. In this video, I'll be reading The Steadfast Tin Soldier by Hans Christian Andersen. Let's see what adventures our little soldier will partake in. The Steadfast Tin Soldier There were once five and twenty tin soldiers, all brothers, for they were the offspring of the same old tin spoon. Each man shouldered his gun, kept his eyes well to the front, and wore the smartest red and blue uniform imaginable. The first thing they heard in their new world when the lid was taken off the box was a little boy clapping his hands and crying, Soldiers! Soldiers! It was his birthday, and they had just been given to him, so he lost no time in setting them up on the table. All the soldiers were exactly alike with one exception, and he differed from the rest in having only one leg, for he was made last and there was not quite enough tin left to finish him. However, he stood just as well on one leg as the others on two. In fact, he is the very one who is to become famous. On the table where they were being set up, were many other toys, but the chief thing which caught the eye was a delightful paper castle. You could see through the tiny windows right into the rooms. Outside, there were some little trees surrounding a small mirror representing a lake, whose surface reflected the waxen swans which were swimming about on it. It was altogether charming, but the prettiest thing of all was a little maiden standing at the open door of the castle. She too was cut out of paper, but she wore a dress of the lightest gauze, with a dainty little blue ribbon over her shoulders by way of a scarf, set off by a brilliant spangle as big as her whole face. The little maiden was stretching out both arms, for she was a dancer, and in the dance one of her legs was raised so high into the air that the tin soldier could see absolutely nothing of it, and supposed that she, like himself, had but one leg. That would be the very wife for me, he thought, but she is much too grand. She lives in a palace, while I only have a box, and then there are five and twenty of us to share it. No, that would be no place for her. But I must try to make her acquaintance. Then he lay down full length behind a snuff box, which stood on the table. From that point, he could have a good look at the little lady, who continued to stand on one leg without losing her balance. Late in the evening, the other soldiers were put into their box, and the people of the house went to bed. Now was the time for the toys to play. They amused themselves with paying visits, fighting battles, and giving balls. The tin soldiers wrestled about in their box, for they wanted to join the games, but they could not get the lid off. The nutcrackers turned somersaults, and the pencil scribbled nonsense on the slate. There was such a noise that the canary woke up and joined in but his remarks were in verse. The only two who did not move were the tin soldier and the little dancer. She stood as stiff as ever on tiptoe, with her arms spread out. He was equally firm on his one leg, and he did not take his eyes off her for a moment. Then the clock struck twelve, when pop, up flew the lid of the snuff box, but there was no snuff in it. No, there was a little black goblin, a sort of jack-in-the-box. Tin soldier, said the goblin, have the goodness to keep your eyes to yourself. But the tin soldier feigned not to hear. Ah, you just wait till tomorrow, said the goblin. In the morning, when the children got up, they put the tin soldier on the window frame, and whether it was caused by the goblin or by a puff of wind, I do not know. But all at once, the window burst open, and the soldier fell head foremost from the third story. 
It was a terrific descent, and he landed at last with his leg in the air, and rested on his cap with his bayonet fixed between two paving stones. The maid servant and the little boy ran down at once to look for him, but although they almost trod on him, they could not see him. Had the soldier only called out, "Here I am," they would easily have found him, but he did not think it proper. To shout when he was in uniform. Presently, it began to rain, and the drops fell faster and faster, till there was a regular torrent. When it was over, two street boys came along. "Look out!" said one. "There is a tin soldier. He shall go for a sail." So they made a boat out of a newspaper and put the soldier into the middle of it, and he sailed down away. And he sailed away down the gutter. Both boys ran alongside, clapping their hands. Good heavens! What waves there were in the gutter, and what a current! But then, it certainly had rained cats and dogs. The paper boat danced up and down, and now and then whirled round and round. A shudder ran through the tin soldier, but he remained undaunted and did not move a muscle. Only looked straight before him with his gun shouldered. All at once, the boat drifted under a long wooden tunnel, and it became as dark as it was in his box. Where on earth am I going to now? Thought he. Well, well, it is all the fault of that goblin. Oh, if only the little maiden were here with me in the boat. It might be twice as dark for all I should care. At this moment, a big water rat who lived in the tunnel came up. "Have you a pass?" asked the rat. "Hand up your pass." The tin soldier did not speak, but clung still tighter to his gun. The boat rushed on, the rat close behind. "Phew!" How he gnashed his teeth and shouted to the bits of stick and straw. Stop him! Stop him! He hasn't paid the toll. He hasn't shown his pass. But the current grew stronger and stronger. The tin soldier could already see daylight before him at the end of the tunnel, but he also heard a roaring sound, fit to strike terror to the bravest heart. Just imagine where the tunnel ended. The stream rushed straight into the big canal. That would be just as dangerous for him as it would be for us to shoot a great rapid. He was so near the end that it was impossible to stop. The boat dashed out. The poor tin soldier held himself as stiff as he could. No one should say of him that he even winced. The boat swirled round three or four times and filled with water to the edge. It must sink. The tin soldier stood up to his neck in water, and the boat sank deeper and deeper. The paper became limper and limper, and at last the water went over his head. Then he thought of the pretty little dancer, whom he was never to see again, and this refrain rang in his ears: "Onward, onward, soldier, for death thou canst not shun." At last, the paper gave way entirely, and the soldier fell through. But at the same moment, he was swallowed by a big fish. Oh, how dark it was inside the fish! It was worse than being in the tunnel, even. And then it was so narrow. But the tin soldier was as dauntless as ever, and lay full length, shouldering his gun. The fish rushed about and made the most frantic movements. At last, it became quite quiet, and after a time, a flash like lightning pierced it. The soldier was once more in the broad daylight, and someone called out loudly, "A tin soldier!" The fish had been caught, taken to market, sold, and brought into the kitchen, where the cook cut it open with a large knife. She took the soldier up by the waist with two fingers. And carried him into the parlor, where everyone wanted to see the wonderful man who had traveled about in the stomach of a fish. But the tin soldier was not at all proud. 
they set him on the table, and, wonder of wonders, he found himself in the very same room that he had been in before. He saw the very same children, and the toys were still standing on the table, with a pretty little dancer. She still stood on one leg and held the other up in the air. You see, she also was unbending. The soldier was so moved that he was ready to shed tears of tin, but that would not have been fitting. He looked at her, and she looked at him, but they never said a word. At this moment, one of the little boys took up the tin soldier and without rhyme or reason threw him into the fire. No doubt, the little goblin in the snuff box was to blame for that. The tin soldier stood there, lighted up by the flame, and in the most horrible heat, but whether it was the heat of the real fire or the warmth of his feelings, he did not know. He had lost all his gay color. It might have been from his perilous journey, or it might have been from grief. Who can tell? He looked at the little maiden, and she looked at him, and he felt that he was melting away, but he still managed to keep himself erect, shouldering his gun bravely. A door was suddenly opened. The draught caught the little dancer, and she fluttered like a sylph, straight into the fire, to the soldier, blazed up, and was gone. By this time, the soldier was reduced to a mere lump, and when the maid took away the ashes next morning, she found him in the shape of a small tin heart. All that was left of the dancer was her spangle, and that was burnt as black as coal. The End Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this reading and or would like to hear more, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the bell to receive notifications of any new readings that I upload. Thanks for all your support and see you again next time.